On today's episode, it's the TK7 Go panel. Today we'll be working with zone masks. Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. One of my favorite things about the TK7 Go panel is the zone mask, luminosity mask. Now they're really great for targeting certain areas of your image, you know, certain tonal zones, shadows, midtones, highlights, and all the zones in between. And you can really get really great adjustments quickly and easily. And let's just go over some of those types of adjustments today. This is not going to be exhaustive on the zone system, but I think as we just keep going at the uh, TK7 Go panel in small bite-sized pieces, you're just going to keep picking up more and more, and it's going to add to your arsenal. And before you know it, you'll be saying, man, I don't know how I ever lived without this uh, TK7 Go panel, which will soon be uh, translating over to the TK8 panel, but we'll go right with it. Uh, but all the principles you're learning with this Go panel will be basically the same with the TK8 panel. Just uh, things will be found in little different places, and, and Tony will probably add some new things along the way. And if you're interested in picking up Tony's panels or any videos, just click on uh, my affiliate link in the uh, description below and use my promo code DK15 at checkout and you'll save 15% off of any Tony Kuiper products. Let's go ahead and jump into the zone masks. I always call it the zone system because of Ansel Adams. I always remember that. So if I say zone system, I mean zone masks. Okay. Anyway, I chose this picture today. This is a stock image, which you can download. I linked it in the uh, description below. So you can go ahead and download that and follow along with me. It's a great way of learning. But I chose this image because of the foggy background. I want to add a little pop of contrast to the background. But, you know, I still want to maintain that foggy look. And you could kill the foggy look if you add too much contrast. But the zone mask will really help us here. And let me show you what I mean. Let's go up to the TK7 Go panel and click on this icon right here, which will open up your zone mask. Now, when you click that, you're greeted with this color picker. Now, this color picker is the brilliance of the zone mask system in this panel because this picker tool lets me pick an actual zone. So I'm not... I am picking a color, yes, but I'm picking a zone. Like I'm picking this light zone where these uh, yellow or orange colors are living right here. Okay, so if I click there, I would pick that actual zone, but I want to work with shadows, right? So I could pick a shadow area in here, and when I click that area, it will target that area perfectly. And I think I'm going to pick this area right here between these branches. I'm going to click right here. And now you're going to, after I click, okay, you're going to see my zone mask. Now light areas will be the areas selected. Dark areas will be less selected. Black areas will be not be selected at all. Now I could go ahead and do some modifications here, you know, like work with the width of this zone, like you've seen me do in past videos or with this levels adjustment here, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to simply put this on a levels adjustment layer right here. I'm just going to click right here for the output and there's my levels adjustment. Now there's many different ways that I could do this adjustment. I could change this uh, blend mode to multiply, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to work with the levels itself. So here's what I'm going to do. You know, I could take the midtone slider and if I move it to the right, I'll darken up the midtones, but I want to mainly target the shadow. So I'm going to put that back to where it was at a one. I'm going to take the shadow slider and I'm going to start to move it to the uh, right and watch my shadows. See how my shadows start to darken up? Now I can get really aggressive here and really darken them up, but that's way too much, okay? Because remember, I want to maintain this foggy look. So I just want to deepen up those shadows just a, a wee little bit, you know, something like, like that right there. Now let me go ahead and toggle this layer on and off. So before and after. I'm going to close this property panel and get it out of the way so we can see what we're doing here. Now that adjustment's going over the entire image. Now I've adjusted these shadows through that uh, loop, through the zone mask, right? And I'm only targeting these shadow areas, these darker areas, right? But it's going over the entire image. So I'm going to use that masking a mask technique. I'm going to use this uh, icon right here. And I'm going to click right here. And what it's going to do, it's going to put this adjustment in a group with a black hide all layer mask on it. Now, I have a nice big brush here, a very soft brush. I have my opacity at 40%. And I'm going to simply paint that adjustment back in here in all these areas here. And it's feathered really nicely. So that's nice. If I want to add another level, I can hit it another time. Now I'm adding 80%. 
Maybe just a little bit up in there. I'll hit that one more time. I think that looks good. Now, check this out. It's only targeting the background. Isn't that cool? Just a nice, subtle adjustment. But I think a really nice improvement. And how hard was that to do? That wasn't hard at all. The next thing I want to do is add a little more saturation to these tonal values of these trees back here, these lighter trees. I just want to add a little pop of saturation to them. And I'm going to use a zone mask because I don't want to hit all the trees. I just want to hit this, this value here, this tonal value in this particular zone. And the zone mask will help me to do that. Let's go ahead and open up the zone masks here. And now we're just going to pick this area right in here, this tonal range right in here. Give that a click. Click OK. Now, if I want to, this time I think I'll work with the width here a little bit. I'm going to narrow this width as I move this in. Now, on these sliders, when you start to move them, nothing happens until you let go. So I'm going to move that in and just tighten that area up a little bit. Something like that. See how it's nicely targeting these areas in here. Now, it's working with zones. It's not looking at color, right? It's, it's working with zones. But I'll show you how I tackle the color issue here. Because I only want to work with this one particular uh, orangish-yellow color, okay? But that's good. I think I'm fine with that. Now, let's go ahead and get a hue saturation layer. So, I'm going to output this to a hue saturation layer. So, I'm going to click right here. And there's my zone mask. And here's my hue saturation adjustment. Now I have my targeted selection tool on by default. If yours isn't turned on, you can come up here to this, let's call it a hamburger menu. Make sure you have auto select targeted adjustment tool checked on. And what we want to do is find that color because I'm only interested in this particular color, right? But I have a zone mask that's going to give me added uh, protection here, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here and I'm going to start to drag this to the right. And look how nicely it's just targeting that color, right? But it's also only color. It's also only targeting that that uh, that tonal zone as well, which is really nice. Now I don't want to go too much here. I just want to add a pop of color. I don't want it to be unrealistic. So let's see. Here's the before and here's the after. Let's start out with that. Now it's going over the entire image. It's affecting the horse. I think a little bit. Yeah, it's affecting the horse, and I don't want that. I only want to change the background, not the foreground just the background. So what I'll do, I'll do the same thing. I'm going to put that in a group with a hide all layer mask on it. Let's get rid of this property panel here. I'm going to go ahead and click on this white brush because I'm going to paint this in with a white brush and it's a pretty big brush. I might make it a little bit smaller here. And my opacity is still set to 40% just like the last time. I'm going to start applying 40% over these trees. Now remember, every time I lift my brush and start to paint again, I'm going to add another 40%. So I can selectively just go over the areas that I want to affect. All right, and I think that's pretty good. Hit there a little bit more. Okay, now let's take a look at the before and after. Here's the before and here's the after. So the before and after. But look how nicely that is targeted, that area. So it does a brilliant job. Now you may be asking yourself, hey, why didn't he just use a uh, hue saturation layer and target that color and mask that mask that adjustment in a group with a black hydro layer mask? The reason being is I wouldn't have got the... Uh, uh, the precision adjustment like I have here. In other words, it would have bled out into other uh, tonal zones and I don't want it to. I only wanted to hit that certain tonal value on these particular trees. Okay, so that wouldn't have worked for me. This is giving me more accurate uh, precision adjustments. Now I'm just studying my image here and I'm thinking I might want to add a little bit of contrast to the foreground here a little bit. So I can come back to this group right here, group one. Click on that layer mask and I still have that 40% opacity and I'm just going to paint right across here and I can add a little bit of contrast back here, just a tiny wee bit and maybe a little bit up in here and here and how about right up here just for the heck of it. Okay, so now I'll take a look. Here's the before that and here's the after. So I just add a little extra contrast up here, which is really I think, I think it really needed it. Let's see where we've come so far. Here's our overall before, and here's our after. Subtle adjustments, but luminosity masking, zone masking, these are the adjustments that will really help you to set your images apart from other images. You know, it'll take your photo editing to a whole new level. 
And I hope you're seeing it's really not that hard to do. Now, I have one last thing I want to do, and that is just some of the uh, lighter areas in the grass here. I just want to just lighten up on the foreground area here, you know, right before the tree line. I just want to lighten up and maybe up, up, up into the foreground itself just a tiny wee bit. Let's go ahead and get another zone mask selection. So this time I'm going to target a highlighted area, say like right here. All right, I'm going to click OK. And now I think I will also uh, narrow that range by adjusting the slider into the left. And I just want to hit the highlighted areas. Yeah, maybe something like that should be good. I'm going to go ahead and put this one on. This time I'm going to use a brightness contrast because, hey, I could use curves, I could use levels, but let's use brightness contrast. There's many ways of getting the same job done. So let's do that for something different. Okay, so we're, high, we're targeting the highlighted areas, okay? Now this is going to be a broad adjustment and we're also going to mask the mask. Again, as you can see, that masking a mask is a wonderful uh, way of making adjustments. So let's see, let's go ahead and take the brightness and adjust the brightness up. And you notice it's only targeting the highlighted areas. Now it's going way up into the background. Who cares? I don't really care because I'm going to mask the mask. So I'm just going to lighten them up just a little bit. And I might even throw a little bit of contrast on there too. You have the added benefit of the contrast control here. And that's too much. Maybe right about there. Let's see. Here's the before and here's the after. Okay. Let's get rid of the property panel here and let's go ahead and mask the mask. Let's grab this icon. Now you'll see this. This is uh, split up and this icon is split up into a reveal all layer mask and a hide all layer mask. So let's put it in a hide all layer mask. So let's click on the left side of this icon and our adjustment is gone. Let's go ahead and bring it back. We're still on white paint. If we weren't, we could click this little icon right here. Um, actually, I'm not on paint. I'm on my uh, uh, move tool. So let me go ahead and click that white. Gosh, I have to click it. Okay, so what am I doing here? Uh, what size do I want my brush? Now nah, that size is good. I'm at 40%. I think I'm going to bring that down to 20%. I don't want to be too aggressive with this adjustment. So there's 20%. There's 20%. Let me hit it one more time. One more time. Let's come up into the foreground. Hit it a couple times across here. A couple passes through here. I don't want to add any highlight here because I don't want you to be drawn there. I want you to go back into the image. Let's take a look here. Here's the before and here's the after. But just like that, so easy to do. Now, you also have this opacity slider, so you can take it the whole way off of any of these adjustments and then build it up slowly and get it where you want it. But I think at 100%, that's going to be fine. Again, there's a before and there's the after. Now, let's go ahead and put all our adjustments into a group. And this is really cool, and I'll show you why. Uh, we have the group three selected. I'm going to hold the shift key down and click on the very first levels adjustment here. And then I'm going to click this icon right here, which will put this in a group with a white reveal all layer mask. It's all in a group. These are adjustments. So we can see here's the overall before and here's the after. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because if we felt we were too aggressive on our adjustments, we could take this opacity, shut it off and just dial in as much of that adjustment as we want. But in my case, I think, yeah, let's just back it off a little bit, like to around a 94. So here's the before. And here's the after. So we have this image and it, it was a foggy image, but I felt it needed just a little bit more contrast. These were nuance -y type adjustments. You know, we just wanted to finesse this image and just, you know, hone it in. And I think we've achieved that. We had a little extra contrast, but we've maintained that foggy look. I hope everyone is getting the hang of uh, luminosity masking, zone masking. We're going to keep going over this stuff. And hopefully with each and every video, you're going to pick up more and more and more. You're going to become more and more proficient in using uh, luminosity masking. And also, please leave comments and questions in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to answer your questions. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. And also click that bell notification icon. And this way, every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. And when you like and share and subscribe, it helps me to grow my channel. And I really appreciate that. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.